a vision to take you from that place and lift you to a higher level of experiencing Him personally on a daily basis. And God is sending into each of our lives these little windows of opportunity through which we have a chance to take a serious risk and step out of faith towards something that He is calling us to uh, rather than what seems logical or what just seems comfortable for ourselves. And those people throughout all of history who take that radical step of faith have always been the ones who God has used and ignited to do amazing things in their personal lives, in their families, for their communities, and for the world at large. All throughout history. Every person in this room, your life and your legacy on this earth will be marked by those windows of opportunity that call on us to take a radical step of faith in order to follow Christ's plan for our lives, rather than our own best for plan that we can come up with. Uh, and whether we are willing to rise up to that challenge, despite the considerable risk to our own comfort level, it will define how large we live in this life in God's eyes. God's plan for us is awesome. You know what I'm saying? I can rest on that and know it flat out. I mean, I know what my plan is. Trying to find out how to dance, trying all these different things. And 
just look at stupid. Jesus came and said, here's the deal. Here's how you walk in rhythm with the song of life. Find happiness, find truth, find peace, find joy, find patience, find things inside you that you can never produce on your own. I'll show you the rhythm of the song. Either walk my way or watch what happens. Dance around walking into people with the stupid. We have a choice to make in life. <laughs> Choice, the only good choice, from personal experience, not because my daddy said so, personal experience, the only good choice is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I mean, uh, forget a five year plan. You know what I'm saying? My God has an eternal plan uh, that cannot fall through so long as we keep taking these steps of faith and jumping through those windows of opportunity that He sends us. And it's okay to be afraid. Like, that's the only thing that keeps us jumping, from jumping through the windows that He sends us. Uh, if God is here and He's pressing into your heart right now, showing you that window of opportunity that He wants you to take so you can finally experience freedom and experience a connection to Him that's on the next level, and not this trivial little religious type level, but really a personal relationship. Uh, the enemy would probably give you 20 reasons right now in your head why not to jump through that little window of opportunity that's passing. Fear is natural. Uh, and everyone who has ever escaped the confines of their inner prison has experienced that fear. But it's not okay to allow that fear to keep us from jumping through that window. We have to stop defining safety based on what the world considers safety. Uh, a bunch of money or a solid retirement or a 10-year plan or a good job or a house on the hill. And start realizing that our only security in this jacked up world is Jesus Christ. And when we plug into it, all that other stuff doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I can, I can find out the worst of things. I got cancer in the morning. And it's like, none of it matters. Because at this point, my house is built on a rock. I know where I'm going. I know, you know, if he wants to cure me, we'll do that. Whatever it is in life, when we build our, build our house on that rock, there's nothing to worry about anymore. It ends our drama of, oh, this thing went wrong. And then the car broke down. And then, the, like, we can stop that drama. We would just stand on the rock of Jesus Christ and trust that he has a good plan for it. His plan is good. So even when my car does break down and I'm salty and I'm on the side of the road, I can know, like, all right, God, well, what is it? Like, is it patience? Am I impatient? There's always a lesson through the drama. Always. Rather than a drama comes into my life and I'm so shook by it that I create 35 other dramas out of it. I said, car breaks down, I'm calling the wife, I'm arguing with her, da 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 the kids are mad, they're whispering. Like, I create 45 dramas out of one drama that was meant to teach me a lesson in my life. Uh, but there is an initial window of opportunity that God presents to every single person that He created because He loves us flat out. It is the opportunity to know His Son, Jesus Christ, on a personal level. Until you go through that first window of opportunity, no other window of peace, joy, uh, integrity, prosperity, any of these things can even be possible until you walk through that first window of opportunity that he provides to every person who's ever been born. On the other side of that window floats all of the windows of true happiness that we can ever want out of life. I urge you, because I know from personal experience, that if you have not walked through that first window, I urge you to do it today. Uh, if you're wondering why things always end up in crap at the end of the day, it is because you're still on the other side of that window. If you're wondering why every relationship always ends up in drama, it's because you may be on the other side of a window of escape or whatever it is that he's called you to jump through. Everything you ever hope for out of life stands on the other side of that first window of Jesus Christ. All you need to do is dive in and leave all of this dramaful world behind. And if you're already in Christ uh, and already standing on the other side of that window, what is the window of opportunity that God has crossing your path right now? It may be small or it may be huge, but that window is the key to get to that next level in your relationship with God. And if, and if your water has grown stagnant and there's just really no life, you've kind of been chasing your tail, sorry, you know how I judge it? I judge it by this. When I look at the fruits of the Spirit, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, all the things that He said, if I plug in, He'll we'll produce it in me. If I can't look back six months and say that I'm more joyful than I was uh, six months ago, or more kind, or more gentle, then I know 
and I'm just, my water is growing stagnant. I'm just kind of chilling, like, well, I'm saved, going to heaven, it's all good. I'm just going to kind of rest here in the water. I want to continue to grow and take it to the next level, and to the next level, to be looking like that. <laughs> to where when I get to heaven, I come up over the hill looking like that. And not only that, as I walk over the hill, an army comes behind me. That in a community, in a city, that we led uh, into the loving arms of Christ because He empowers us to do it. You know and so every day, I got windows of opportunity in my life right now. God is crossing things through my path right now, and it's like, even though I already know He's good, I know He is what He says He is, I'm still looking at the windows like, man, it's, there's fear, you know what I'm saying? But faith steps out despite fear. If I believe in something flat out, if I truly believe in something, I will jump out. If, if I believe that this chair will hold me, I just sit down. I don't even think about the fact that it could be having a broken leg. Or faith just doesn't, you know what I'm saying? So if I truly have faith in what I believe, I'm running at it with everything I have. Or I'm sitting on like 80% faith and not quite sure about things. Um, every one of us here has windows in our life right now that are crossing. And think about that today. <coughs> What windows of opportunity is we passing by here? I know as a church, as a whole, God is calling us to take some radical risks. Even coming here, planting the church in the, the, in the first place, the demographic that we're targeting, uh, there's some huge risks that we have to take, but I know that when God calls us to take those risks, on the other side of that is abundant blessing. And that's some of the stuff that we're experiencing now with all what God is doing. People just roll up and say, hey, you want a bus? Like, Abundant blessings are coming through because we're just taking those risks and saying, yeah, it looks crazy, I get it. People are trying to steal the computers, I get it. We're going to continue to talk at these because I want these. Uh, yeah, people are, you know, smoking outside and the boys and girls come complaining that we're trying to burn down the building. I get that. But we want to, we want to talk. I want the smokers in this building. <laughs> we want uh, every, every single person to, so that we don't have to shun anybody. That's a risk. You know what I'm saying? It's a risk that we have to take. But... It cast a vision to the community of the true face of Christ. It didn't say, oh no, you got to think right, I got time. How about you when you stop smoking and then we'll kick it? No, Jesus met the woman at the well and he met the prostitute where she was at. He met right where people are at in life and compelling them to move forward in a godly direction, no matter where that's at. We'll stick to that. Even though that's a risky thing to do, we'll stick to that because God is blessed in our ministry because of that, uh, strictly and solely. So in your personal lives, think about window that's crossing your life. And no matter what fear it takes, everyone's been afraid throughout all of history. All. I'm sure Martin Luther was pretty afraid to do what he did when he came into the uh, country and started a revolution that changed the entire country. How scary of a thing is that? He's got death threats every day. But he did it. He stepped out despite that fear because God had a window of opportunity past him where he could stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And he did it despite all fear. Lost his life for it. You know what I'm saying? If there's always going to be fear, we cannot allow that fear to stop us from moving to that next level of God. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for every detail of who you are, Lord. And you're like the wind, Father. We cannot bottle you up. We can't put you in a can. But we can sure, surely see the effect that you have as you move through things, Lord. And I give you thanks and praise for every detail of who you are, what you're doing in every life in this room, or the plan that you have for us that is always good and always awesome. And I just thank you for loving us enough to come uh, and send your son Jesus, Lord, to provide us a way home. Uh, we were born to be leaders, Father, but we needed somebody to lead us. Thank you for giving us that, that model of what it looks like uh, uh, to be godly men and women. And Father, I just give you thanks and praise for every detail of who you are and what you do.